All right, hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of the Zero Two Heroes series. And uh, we are in Tokyo, away at FC Tokyo. And believe it or not, it took a whopping 24 minutes for the first chance to come. And uh, unsurprisingly, it wasn't our chance, it was FC Tokyo's chance. <laughs> and just a minute later, they really should have broken the deadlock. One on one with our goalkeeper, maybe had a decent shot for a penalty as well. But uh, upon the half an hour mark, in uh, true kind of Viva and Nagasaki fashion, we then allowed the opposition to uh, hit the woodwork. And um, uh, yeah, we basically created absolutely nothing offensively. And it was all FC Tokyo. So we went in at half time. The gaffer decided to bring me on in a defensive midfield position, which isn't really ideal for me. So a lot of the time, we kind of found ourselves trying to obey his rules and all that and try not to get forward too much but despite you know kind of barely getting any offensive chances in the first half against the run of play um Sauerder scores and it was a really nice assist at the front post as well and uh, we found ourselves one nil up and a couple of minutes later you know I put pedal to the metal and um, try and win the ball back and play the long ball forward to Mr. Big Number 9, Juan Delgado. Um, and he found himself through on goal, found himself scoring a goal, and I found myself assisting a goal. And that made it 2-0 away from home. And uh, on paper, if things remained the way that it currently, or that they currently were, um, it would have been a massive, massive result for us. And I think it would have actually seen us creep into... Uh, the top half of the table at this point. You know, credit where it's due to me for spotting the run uh, and credit where it's due to the striker as well for timing his run uh, to basically break the offside trap and obviously finish as well. So that was really satisfying for me to come off the bench and within 15 minutes get an assist. Um, here it looked like there was a little bit of defensive confusion between me and the guy who's currently to my left hand side. I kind of tucked inside um, when it looked to me like he was going to go to the player that was out wide and then in the end neither of us tracked the wide man and we conceded in again true Viva and Nagasaki fashion but you know we were still 2-1 up and uh, we had 10 or 12 or so minutes try and hold on and not to concede but unfortunately, 89th minute, we threw away the 2-0 lead we once had. This time it was their big number nine that got on the score sheet. And uh, the full-time whistle saw the game end 2-2. And really, considering we were 2-0 up at one point, um, not really an acceptable, uh, acceptable result at the end of the day. But considering how bad we've been all season at conceding goals, considering the fact that the manager won't try and change it round to try and prevent it from happening. Um, I can't pretend it wasn't surprising to see us collapse like that. Next up, we were at home against the Shimzu Pulse and once again very quiet for the first couple of minutes. And then 35 minutes in, the opposition had their first chance of the game. And believe it or not, that was the only chance of the game or real chance of the game up until that point. And... Um, to try and basically create a little bit more going forwards. Gaffer subbed us on as a right midfielder this time. Uh, but we were under, or individually, I was under pressure quite a lot. Because, you know, the opposition team were playing very, very well. Uh, and I found myself having to track back and do a lot of defensive legwork exactly like this as well. Um, uh, but fortunately for us, though, our goalkeeper was playing well. And whilst we were conceding chances... Uh, in football, doesn't matter how many chances you concede, as long as you don't concede any goals. Um, even though <laughs> the opposition's chances kept on coming. Good header there at the front post, but just over the bar. Uh, 60th minute, it looked like we were mounting a attacking opportunity. But then, you know, the fat lady sung. We got counter-attacked and a lovely finish from the uh, Shimzu striker in the form of Douglas curled it in with his left foot. A bit of a finesse finish here, as we can see. Round our goalkeeper, placed it into the far corner. Unfortunately, saw us go 1-0 down on our own turf. And, uh, you know what they say, 
Um, you're at your most vulnerable when you've first scored. Well, with us, it works the other way around. You're at your most vulnerable when you concede, apparently. Because five minutes later, we conceded again. And, you know, it just felt like all the hard work we'd really put into the game up until that point was undone with really five seconds... or not five seconds, sorry. <laughs> five minutes of just poor defensive work, a little bit of idiocy. And that second goal as well obviously originated from a set piece of ours. So even more disappointing to get counter-attacked in that fashion. But you know what we're like, uh, at least individually. We keep huffing. We keep puffing. 82nd minute, I made my way forwards from the DMF position to try and create something. And then with the last kick of the game, 91st minute, ball comes to me, edge of the box, swing my boot at it. But unfortunately, whilst it hit the inside of the post, it came back across goal. Uh, and we ended up with a rating of 6.5. Last but not least for this episode, a game against Nagoya Grampus. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that team, it's the team in Japan that Gary Lineker played for. Um, quite a strong team as well, but uh, it did look like we were playing better than what we had done in the past two previous games. Um, we came on. Uh, as a defensive midfielder at half time, again, I don't really like coming on as a defensive midfielder simply because I get penalised for trying to go forwards, which is really, really frustrating. Um, goalkeeper was doing well, but again, as soon as the second half came along, hopefully it wasn't my introduction that really caused this, um, you know, Nagoya were getting the mass majority of the chances and we were getting the odd one here and there, but we didn't really seem to have our finishing boots. Uh, on. Uh, but eventually, 60 minutes in, the opposition made a mistake um, that we couldn't capitalise on. But we did eventually, believe it or not, capitalise on this mistake. And it was none other than myself who capitalised on that mistake. Though the secondary mistake made by the defence. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to apologise in advance for the uh, celebration that you guys are about to witness. I didn't realise I was doing this celebration, to be honest. I kind of just ran to the side of the pitch. Before you knew it, like, we were all practising how to, to, I don't know, drive for some strange reason. Um, but there you go. You know, I huffed, I puffed. Um, I initially won the ball back and I took that gamble. It was a bit of a risk. And then, uh, you know, I reaped the rewards thanks to the one two and all we had to do really was hold on for another 20 minutes but you know you've made it up until episode seven at this point so you probably know us inside out so you'll know that we have absolutely little to no character or grit or resilience whatsoever or our defense at least here at the viva and nagasaki and we conceded a header so yet another chance for three points uh, where we have to settle for only a single point uh, just as we saw in the first game away at fc tokyo Unfortunately, this game too ended in a draw. We had one of the final chances on goal. I was running around in circles. Um, this was a good opportunity as well. But, you know, uh, as opposed to some of the kind of CPU teams we play, we're just not quite as clinical because we are, of course, the weakest team in the game. Um, our final match rating this time round was 9.0, unsurprisingly and uh, it left us 11th in the table. So there we go, Manager's Trust Level 67, slowly but surely getting better.